And you have everybody muted, right? That's what, yeah. Good, because I got to have something else. Okay. Yeah. Uh, welcome, everyone. This is the is this our first Zoom meeting of the social the City Council Social Services Grants Committee. We are having a special meeting, really, to kind of um, meet and get a chance to visit with the United Way staff. United Way being our vendor for the um, social services grants process this year. So um, with that, um, Corey, do you want to make introductions and shall we get our guests on? Sure. Um, so happy to announce that uh, Jessica Lerner and Brett Martin are on uh, our Zoom call today and, and going to talk about the process that we have in place and kind of where we're at, just so you guys can be informed where we're at right now and where we we're going and you guys can ask any questions that you might have. So I'll turn it over to Jessica and Brett. Morning. Morning. Uh, thank you, thank you for, for the opportunity, opportunity to be a part of uh, this, this morning, this morning uh, for us for to us talk to you, you a little about where we are. Time out just, just a second, if you would. We're getting double audio here. We're getting him. Let me check in. Oh. Sound check, exactly. Right, there we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Brent. Keep, <laughs> keep going now. Sorry about that. Still getting double audio for me? No, nope, you're ready. We're good. Okay. Very good. <laughs> uh, so thank you for the opportunity to share where we are in this process. Uh, as um, we're all aware, this isn't quite the way we had uh, hoped to begin. Uh, this process as vendor, but we have greatly appreciated the support of um, uh, city staff and uh, elected officials in making this uh, a smooth transition. Uh, what I can do is give you a, a brief update this morning of where we are in the process and then um, open it up to questions and give you the opportunity to ask us about uh, where we uh, about where we are if that if that is suitable for you. That works fine. Committee, are are we fine. we good? Yep. Fine. Okay. So you know what? Let me I I dived straight into this because of the Zoom has got me off my game a little bit. Let me make sure that we as a committee introduce one another and that you all do as well before we proceed. I'm Karen Hiller, I'm the chair. Christina Valdivia Alcala, District 2 Council Rep. Uh, Mike Padilla with the new haircut. <laughs> <laughs> you three? In introductions There's United. Excuse me? There's a few other people on here too. Okay, why don't you from United Way introduce yourselves? And apparently we have some other people on the line, and we'll let them introduce themselves so we all know who's here. I'm Jessica Lynn here. I'm with United Way at Greer Topeka. I'm the CEO and president. Okay. Brett Martin, Vice President of Community Impact with United Way of Greater Topeka. Kathy Botaw, Lulac Senior Center. Thanks, Kathy. Is anybody else on? I did not hear that at all. Ed Zolski with the Mirror Work for Success program. Abby Bain with them, with the Mirror Work for Success program. Oh. Is that it? So. Okay, yeah. we can't see you, so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of floating here, but uh, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> all right, Brett, please continue and take it away. Good, thank you. Um, it, it does look like we have a couple of others. Robin St. James from Let's Help is with us. Lisa Kane from Doorstep. Carla Hedquist from Health Access, Shawnee County Medical Society and Stormont Vale Health. Uh, Lalo Munoz from uh, El Centro. And one other that I can't uh, identify here on the screen. Um, but, uh, yeah, that at least gives us uh, a little more of a sense of who is in the virtual room. Thank you. So uh, just as an update uh, in terms of where we are now on May 6th, 
uh, we had uh, a workshop uh, with the potential applicants for social service grants uh, at 10 a.m. Uh, in the morning and conducted that via Zoom. We took a number of questions during that, uh, during that meeting. Those questions became part of an FAQ document that we posted in EC Impact, the online grant management system, along with the slide deck from the meeting so that those who uh, attended would have uh, that as reference, but also for those who were unable to attend. Uh, Joyce Kotzer, uh, our Director of uh, Information Technology, and Juliet McDiffitt, our Director of Community Impact, have been uh, um, receiving emails and providing technical assistance <laughs> to all of those who have begun the application process. As of this morning at 9 a.m., we have 17 agencies who have entered the system and are in process uh, of uh, application and 19 programs, keeping in mind, of course, that some of those agencies uh, will apply for both the uh, emergency services and uh, the preventive side. Right. Yeah. So that is currently where uh, we are right now in the process. As we, uh, as we take a look at our larger uh, timeline, uh, just as a just as a reminder of of uh, the larger uh, scope, uh, we um, released the uh, RFP on May first at noon. Those applications are due um, May 29th at 5 p.m. Once those are received, uh, Juliet will go through those applications and review them for eligibility and those proposals which are, do not meet the minimum standards uh, will uh, be notified by june 3rd 2020 and then from there we work with our reviewers per the guidelines uh, set up by the social service grant committee related to eligibility for those reviewers but also the score sheet they will then score them and then <clears throat> us uh, for a facilitated conversation and then uh, move forward on the timeline that's the that's the 1000 foot view of where we are uh, right now i uh, would be happy to answer any questions uh, that you have related to uh, the process, and I don't know how um, I don't know how we do this, um, Councilwoman Hiller. So I will uh, defer to you in terms of how how we uh, go about this. Um, I will throw it back to you. We've not been briefed by staff at all about how this relationship has grown and built. So I will I will look at both Corey from staff as well as from you all. I mean, this, um, I really appreciate staff setting this up. We hadn't necessarily counted on it, but as a, as a get to know you. So I guess what I would do is throw out to you all, first as chair, and then I'll engage the committee members as well if they have questions. Were there any bugs? Were there any questions? Were there any things that you wanted to throw back at us to clarify our intent or, or something like that from the, uh, what, what was delivered to you as our vendor? Um, we met initially with city staff and uh, had a number of back and forth meetings, both in person, but also via email as we work through the request for proposal uh, and uh, the uh, other materials that were prepared by your committee, making sure that we were clear uh, on uh, the on the relationship, what would be um, what would be administered by United Way of Greater Topeka, and uh, what would be responsibility of city staff? 
we can tell you that we are continuing to work that out as we uh, move forward here, but we feel like we have uh, a good amount of clarity regarding the role not only of our agency, but also of those staff members who have been assigned uh, to the work. Uh, most recently, we had discussion about uh, the quarterly reports and about payments, and that those payments will come uh, through the city of Topeka, but that the contracts uh, will be uh, distributed to agencies who uh, are awarded grants by United Way of Greater Topeka. We will go through that uh, process of extending those contracts as we uh, do for our own. And so we'll take care of that technical side and then they will be returned to the city for uh, the signature of the city manager. So it has, been, it has been a back and forth process. We certainly appreciate Corey and her team uh, in uh, wor working with us helping us understand uh, the unique language of uh, this particular grant process and for her uh, asking us questions about how it is that we can uh, weave these processes together to be have the best outcome, not only for uh, the dollars that are invested, uh, but also for uh, city council and for this uh, committee and also for the applicants. Thank you. Um, Corey, do you have any comments to yeah, share i think that um the purpose of this meeting was really um to reassure you that we are uh, following the guidance of the committee and so united way has their own process but they're using the process of the committee and so we just want to reassure you that things are going smoothly since it's a new process we just think it's important to to give you an update on where we're at and where we're going so that was kind of the purpose of the meeting and then you can ask any any questions uh, that we may or may not have the answers to today. But uh, so that was kind of the purpose of the meeting today. OK, well, the committee worked really hard mm -hmm. to get that clarified. But yet it is a new process. And so this is an opportunity with, a, you know, sort of this no fault opportunity to say, well, yeah, but this one stumped us or whatever. Committee members, do you have any questions? Councilwoman. Thank you, um, Chair. Um, hello, all. I just wanted to uh, welcome the United Way into this partnership. Um, I will be very honest in that uh, I think I was the only one that didn't want the outsourcing to occur. Uh, but now that it has occurred, uh, I'm hoping that we can all put our best foot forward. I do want to say specifically that what I'm looking at during this process is a focus on customer service. There is nothing more important than our relationship with each individual constituent or with each individual agency. So my way of looking at it, after having been in customer service since I was 17, and knowing that there's a lot of give and take, a lot of back and forth, jobs that are frontline customer service can be very challenging, uh, yet it's imperative from uh, my perspective that when we deal with these agencies and understanding their commitment to community, that we do so in a professional, in a uh, partnership, in a way that is uh, as quick as we can to provide the answers, uh, as thorough as we can to provide the answers. And if there has to be a denial, if there has to be an agency that doesn't um, get some funding uh, for us to be able, or you all to be able to, uh, and, and whoever is the decision makers, obviously, uh, to be able to back that up in a professional, courteous and um, just kind manner because that's really what we should be about. And uh, I'm looking forward to engaging uh, with all of you and to also hear from the agencies as they go through this process with you. So thank you. Thanks, Chair. Karen. Thank you. Just quickly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, thank you, Karen. Um, just to follow up on, on uh, Christina Valdivia's um, comments. Um, 
I want to welcome you too to this process. Um, for me, it's new since I came on the council. So it's, I had the part of the old process is now the new process. Um, I think it's important that we really take a team approach to this and that we work uh, collaboratively through the whole process in, in, during the transition and the awarding of grants. Um, I think that's, for me, the one thing that I would like to really see. And I think what uh, serves us best is timely communication uh, from all parties in any instance where there is any kind of a question or hiccup or anything. I'm, not to be asking for uh, communications on a regular daily basis, because uh, that'd be micromanaging, I don't want to do that. But I do think that uh, if something is on the horizon, horizon that it's shared with the committee as soon as possible uh, so that uh, we give a, get a heads up. I think and none of us like surprises. Uh, I think the United Way is a well-established organization in our community and feel confident that we'll have that cl collaborative teamwork. And so again, uh, welcome, welcome you to the team effort. Thank you. Any, Thank you. any comments back? Yes, just uh, just uh, a couple. Uh, thank you uh, for the welcome, um, Councilwoman uh, Valdivia Acola and uh, Councilman Padilla. Uh, regarding customer service, uh, we uh, we could uh, not agree more. We work um, tirelessly as an agency to communicate professionally and effectively with our partners. Uh, we do a great deal of um, work to gather feedback uh, from those partners with respect to our communication and to our processes. Um, when uh, Jessica and I have gone out for in-person contract signings in the past, uh, those have been uh, opportunities for us to uh, sit uh, directly across the table from executive directors and to be able to have an uh, open and frank and honest conversation. Uh, and we have done that not only with uh, uh, contract meetings, but also in the event of denials, where we have met with agencies and we have walked through step by step what, at least in our process, panelists have noted about applications and provided opportunity for um, improvement in, uh, uh, in the future. So certainly that's something that we uh, want to uh, continue in this process. Councilman Padilla, with respect to uh, communication, uh, we find that um, we, as, as an agency, as we're doing our work, when we think we're communicating uh, enough, we need to communicate more. And so uh, we strive to over communicate with any number of different folks. As you know, as an agency, United Way has a very strong peer structure, and we serve at the pleasure of a board, but also a host of board level committees with whom we communicate regularly. And so that process is not uh, new to us in terms of uh, communicating with uh, a body. And so we hope to extend and continue that process of uh, open communication and looking ahead communication with the Social Services Grant Committee. I think the only thing that I would add, I completely echo what, what Brett has said. Um, we truly appreciate this opportunity to work with the city in, in, in a different manner. And um, we assure you that we very much value all of the work you have already done. Um, we have looked very closely at your at your scoring tools and, and everything that you have put forth and um, has actually been really great for us too, as we're all trying to do system improvements. And um, it has been very helpful to see um, everything you have put together. And uh, we assure you we will do absolutely everything we can to, to make this um, as smooth of a transition and, and work in great collaboration with you all. So thank you for this opportunity. Um, if, if I could follow up, um, we've got the agencies on board, but before we would ask for, see if they have any comments, in the course of your training and you're working back and forth with the agencies, um, and we can deal with this if there's something, but you know, we tried very hard to get that whole system set up and have it as clear and fail safe as possible. Are there some bugs that, that have already emerged that you needed to communicate about and work on? Any answers okay? So on our side, with respect to the grant portal, we are of course set up on, uh, 
on a United Way side and on a city of Topeka side. <laughs> there have been uh, some glitches uh, with um, agencies entering the United Way grant portal on our page rather than the city of Topeka page. Uh, and that that's, that's just part of it. And so Joyce, uh, our director of IT, has worked with agencies to go back in in a very quick manner and make sure that that is taken care of so that they are able to complete their applications in a timely manner. That's part of the FAQ section, and we've worked to communicate uh, with agencies about that so that there's not duplication. If, in fact, those uh, go into the wrong portal and they get too far along, it does get difficult. But so far, those have been caught early. And uh, Julia and Joyce check those regularly. So um, that's more of a technical issue. Uh, but they have been they have been on top of that and been communicating that uh, with me in uh, our uh, weekly meetings. Councilwoman Alcohol Alcala has a call. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> has a follow up question. I'm sorry. <laughs> thank you, Chair. Um, I would just say thank you for letting us know about that glitch. And I'm going to tell you the concern that I have to make sure that you all stay on top of it is that we know that some of the agencies that you'll be working with are very short staff, have part-time staff, write multiple grants, are not, do not always have the level of familiarity with grants that other agencies may have. So my concern is we, as we try to get the bugs fixed is that as we get closer to the, the the time frame for the grant applications being due that hopefully we can have these glitches figured out because I would I had received emails in the past uh, that there had been some issues with it being time stamped I think the word is time stamped so close to the date of the a grant application being due and I just want to make sure that if we have an agency not I'm not saying to bend the rules what I'm saying if they are getting it in before that time that we can have these glitches figured out so we don't have any errors in that way with them being possibly construed as being past the deadline when the whole time they had made it in before that so I, I wanted to point that out and thank you for bringing up the, the glitches that you are the little bugs you are having no, thank you for that. And Joyce and Juliet are both able to look at the back end of EC Impact and see where agencies are entering, which is why they've been able to uh, respond so quickly. So usually uh, every morning they are in taking a look and usually once or twice during the day. And okay. so um, unless an agency were to enter the system for the first time at four o'clock on the due date, uh, mm -hmm. I wouldn't imagine we would have any issues like that at this point. And, and a number of agencies who have been in that meeting have sent multiple emails. Staff's been responding uh, well within uh, 24 hours to them. I've been responding to those, uh, Juliet and Joyce have been uh, as well. And so far it's been, uh, it's been a smooth process as we've seen those glitches to be able to handle those in an effective way. I certainly appreciate that and understand uh, the strain that's on a whole host of our uh, nonprofit agencies as they are uh, navigating uh, slimmer and slimmer, slimmer revenue streams and uh, human capacity as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, let's take a moment. I can't see the agencies who are on, but our, our tech person can. Is there, is there anybody from the agencies that would want to throw a comment in at this point? I would. Kathy from LULAC. Okay. Um, the only, the only um, comment that I would like to make, and, and this probably will fall into a technical comment, is that my treasurer has attempted three times already to load the financial information and is unable to do so. So is that something I need to maybe contact Joyce about, or do, I don't know which one to call. Anytime you have an issue like that, you can send it to either me, Joyce, or Juliet. Okay. We usually work within um, minutes of getting those to get those to the right folks. Had an issue with an agency yesterday, uh, it was and, and it was related to financial pieces and just understanding how to get those to load. Uh, 
Joyce was able to respond and she had those, uh, the individual had those loaded within just a couple of minutes after. Okay. Yes, uh, you can send that either to me, Joyce, or Juliet, and uh, we'll walk your treasurer through that process. Okay, great, thank you. Any others? Nope. All right. While we're here today, and I hope that I did fail to review notes to the point where we missed something we should cover today. But there had been discussion in our committee meeting about having a survey of the agencies um, and in a timely manner. And so there had been some conversation about what the questions should be, but we did not finalize that. There had been some conversation about the timing and the, and the method of getting people to turn them in and even though like having them come in with quarterly reports is a, is a fairly fail-safe way of getting responses. We didn't want to wait that long because we wanted the comments back from the agencies this summer after the deadline so that we could, we could consider them um, in, a, in a timely manner. Has there been any progress made, uh, Corey or United Way, on developing that content process yet? We have not made the survey. Um, okay. I think if you would like to provide some direction on what you want on the content of the survey, then I can certainly try to put something together and we can work together on that. But um, are you talking about a survey just related to the current process? Yes. Okay. And, and we discussed that in one or two mm -hmm. meetings as we were getting to this point. So there, there's record in the, in the minutes, and some of the agencies had some input as well in terms of the timing and, and methodology. We didn't finish it. I think we were going to leave it up to you all to, to work that out. Okay. Um, but I just wanted to bring it forward now just in case it, it hadn't yet been addressed because I think the idea was, um, if not right after the submissions, obviously the appeal process gives you a chance to find out what somebody thought went wrong. <laughs> But we just assume not do it only in that way. So if it was even at about the time of the submissions for people to just pop pop a note to us, um, maybe maybe we can can have some discussion right now. But I, I I know we were expecting you all to work that out and to have United Way handle getting that for us at the time. Any any further recollections or thoughts on that? I think having the dialogue right now, Chair, would uh, be good. That way, they, you know, whoever can start working on it, process, uh, you know, customer service, uh, also any suggestions. Because I think those suggestions, we got some really good suggestions from Tawny with community action. So I think that that's all part of a good survey, but yet we want to make it tight enough to we're not bogging them down with too many exactly. questions. Agreed. So. I don't know if that helps. Yeah, no, that's very helpful. Something yeah. kind of short and open-ended. We really didn't bring it in for a landing, but if it, what I'm hearing even today, if there's a tech question and a customer service question and a, you know, what was in the, what the application form and the scoring mm -hmm. so that people had an opportunity to give us feedback, you know, they won't know about the scoring, though, at the time they turn it in. So exactly how to pull that off. Um, I. I was looking at my calendar earlier. I know that we had some back and forth between Liz and, and we told her she didn't have to be here so now I can't ask her, um, and, and you about setting times for us to meet again this summer. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously the timing of asking for that feedback um, needs to, we aren't sure whether there'll be any appeals. We hope there won't be, but we always want to, want to be responsive that's a pretty fast turnaround so that we get those decisions made so um i think we're scheduled to meet on the 8th and the 15th of july does that sound right i didn't write it on my calendar it's either the 8th and the 15th or the 15th and the 22nd i'm not sure we got a confirm confirmation on the final yeah i'm not for sure that it, it's on there yet but I think that's what we were discussing. And that tied straight in with the calendar that you all got. They were 
staff was looking at, okay, here's the deadline, this is when the committee's supposed to work, this is when we're supposed to have decisions and get them out, and then we've got a, either a seven or 10 day turnaround if somebody's not happy, they need to file right away so that we can address it. So we've got those two meetings. Um, if we don't have any appeals, we could have just one meeting probably, and that would likely be the 15th of July. So however, is that enough information for you all to get that done? <laughs> yeah, I'm wondering if you would like uh, us to schedule a meeting in June uh, before the results come out to talk about the results of the survey? Um, or do you just want the results sent It to depends. You I, again, it, we, hadn't, we hadn't finalized this. It depends on whether the survey, you know, if the survey comes in with the apps, then we'll have that much. If you want to wait and survey everybody, after the appeals have occurred, then we've got a photo finish there, you know, after the deadline, mm -hmm. so that people are, are responding based on not only the process, but how they fared in that process. Mm -hmm. um, again, this committee inherited, um, didn't come out of us, but inherited a lockdown on how the awards would be made, so there won't be any flexibility with how we spread the money out unless we really have a problem with what the results are and go back to the council on it. We, we won't know that un, until the middle of July. Um, certainly, you could draft the, the, the survey and just email it to us and, mm -hmm. and get comments, too. Um, what are, what are y'all's thoughts? I'd like that. I'd like that, too. Okay. Draft the survey out to us and maybe the turnaround in that, too. and. I know that the, I recall from the discussion in the minutes that the agencies were like, yeah, well, we've all been through this, right? Um, if you just ask people to turn in a survey, you don't get very many. <laughs> uh, maybe we will because this is the first time. I think everyone, and hopefully in the, in the course of the process, I think everyone knows that we as the committee representing the council as well as United Way, we all know this is the first time and we want it to go well and so we want that feedback um, so that we can decide what we're going to, this same committee will be the committee in the fall that then begins meeting and, and reviews that whole process and recommends to the governing body how we think it should be next year and that will have to do with everything from whether we should continue outsourcing to whether the questions and the scoring, the whole thing is on the table every year for the committee from that year to review the whole thing and make a recommendation to the council for the following year. Um, I think, you know, if, if in fact we just, we should ask for the surveys in between the middle of July and when we start to meet in the fall, we just need it at some point. Yeah. And we don't, we, we don't know what the, comments will be. So what do you all think? Should we get them before we meet in July? There might be a second round after we make all our decisions. <laughs> That's the deal. Uh, Say again how, how you want, what, well, what the purpose would be in, in, for a meeting in July. Well, the meeting in July was we have to meet to make to to take the results of their work and affirm it to forward it to the council for the budget. Mm -hmm. um, if there are appeals, we need to meet to address those for the agencies to come to us and voice their uh, take a run at their appeals. Our system is set up that the appeals are based only on the scoring, mm -hmm. um, but we, we have to accommodate that, that we would be ready for that. If what we want this year is an evaluation of how the process worked, I think we want that as soon as possible, but there may be, there will be a set of comments about how the, the application process and the education process and the tech worked um, but there might be other comments that people have once the final allocations are, the appeals process has been gone through and the allocations are done, and no one will know what their thoughts are on that until it's over. So two, there may be two then. 
surveys kind of that we're looking that, at. That's, I'm just trying, I'm thinking out loud here so because then, we had debated that and here we are. Yeah, and so then one survey would come in before the July, let's say 15th, let's say 15th meeting, and those could come by email, right? Is that what we're saying? And, you know, they email could. to us. And then we would have our July 15th meeting or whatever July meeting mm -hmm. to go over what you just said. And then there would be possibly, if there was any denials, there was just going to be like maybe a handful of perhaps comments. Um, and that could come in email form to us as well and then have the meeting if there's any, uh, if we have to go through an appeal process. Or, um, and again, I'm thinking out loud because we had not nailed this, um, the agencies are really good about attending our meetings. I suppose they can simply come to our first meeting in September and we can talk about it and not, not have too many surveys. Uh, we, we did discuss that mm -hmm. people are good at just showing up like as well. That. And then just the one survey. So process survey okay. at the time of the applications, and then we'll just view, uh, meet with people at our meetings in right. the fall. Right. Okay, and then um, you all may want to, to, we're all aware that our committee serve on a, a calendar year, but the process is in April through April, or it, even the process, the application process, has its, has its spring to summer zone, but then the actual grant management process will happen next year. So there had been some discussion of, of, with one of those quarterly reports, just getting some feedback on how the grant management process was going that you all might want to take under consideration. Um, and, and I recall the input from the agency saying, hey, just say you got to turn it in with your quarterly report, and that makes it kind of easy to get those. Um, okay, so. I, Councilwoman. I, well, this may not be the time for the question. Go ahead with it. I, I was just trying to recap. Have we got a hand? Yes. Okay. Uh, Brett, you can go ahead. Yeah, so just as a um, just as a follow up to what you were saying, we can also build within EC Impact a survey. And so it can be built within that same system uh, so that the agencies won't have to fill it out in any other type of way. And as we work with Corey on that, we'll make sure that that has both quantitative and qualitative data that comes with it. I think as we go through this process, it's important for us to have some of that quantitative as the applications are full of quantitative questions, uh -huh. but also the opportunity for the narrative. And so just know that that can be built within the system uh, of uh, EC Impact. Joyce can build that in, uh, in a cooperation with Corey. We can work together and get that to you for your approval, but it can be there for the agencies to access. And in that way, we may find ourselves with a higher response rate with it being embedded in a system where they've already been working. Thank you. I think that's what the yeah. agencies were making reference to when we chatted about it a couple of months ago. So that could even be done. I mean, it would be a kind of quick turnaround, but it could even be done for the submission date, mm -hmm. May 29th. That's great. They were saying, <laughs> just like you did, that the response time, the response is better if it's, if it's linked with their reporting or some deadline through EC Impact. Super. Okay. Thank you, Brett, for that suggestion. I think it keeps it simpler mm -hmm. and less complicated, and I appreciate that. Okay. Councilwoman. Okay. Thank you, Chair. I did, I may have missed this somewhere in notes or emails. Did we determine what the price is for the outsourcing? What the cost was for the United Way services? I don't know that that was ever reported to us. Hmm. Can we get that? I sh can email that to you. Okay. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. And we know there was a commitment to not take it off of the top 
of the 400 plus Correct. thousand. That was going to come out of yes, neighborhood relations. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay, thank you. This has been great. Are there any other issues that uh, committee no. wants to discuss at this point? Corey, staff, anything else? Nope, I think we're good. United Way, anything else? Agencies, anything else? Whoever you are back there? <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all for participating. We're excited about this. It sounds like we're off to a good start. Um, we will see you next time, and we are adjourned. Thank you.